Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Lloyd Walton. <clears throat> I'm here to tell you about my book, Chasing the Muse Canada, but put out by Friesen Press. In a, in a sense, it's a biography, but it's also, there's a lot of history in the story. It took five years to write, but I wanted to write it all my life. But it all came back to a, I snuck into a lecture by U of T professor Northrop Fry. And he was talking about the, uh, how a play works with gears. And yeah, the gears are plots. There are plots, plots of the play are all twisting and sometimes they, inter they connect and they, they, they go together and sometimes they connect to larger gears. But the, all of these gears are going through and they drive a, a main theme. I try to, I try to, an idea like that with the plots were, were like uh, aviation, uh, Aboriginal history, uh, a mystery, um, becoming an artist, um, rock and roll, um, becoming a filmmaker, and becoming a pilot, and becoming an NHL star. So all these gears are, are going and click, 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 all the way through and they inter intersect all the way through the book. So the plots, the plots in the in the story, develop from uh, childhood experiences. Also, uh, my father's uh, experience uh, in 1935, he drove a Harley Davidson across Canada before there were before there were highways. <laughs> and in some cases, in the prairies, he had to um, drive across Ball Prairie. There were no roads. There were no road maps as well. And it was also during the Depression. He got caught in a dust storm and and. Uh, and he saw a lot of people on the move. Uh, he saw Aboriginals moving with horses and all their belongings being pulled behind them on travois. On another time, he was going through the Rockies and uh, he came around a corner, it was just dirt roads, and there were about 18 Aboriginals on peabald ponies. And he said they were, they were, they just, all they were wearing were breech cloths and uh, he just, he was back in time. But to me, he wandered into a portal of time. And I always wondered, could, you know, what I, I would love to be able to wind, wander into a portal of time. And um, that is one of the, one of the plots in the book, <laughs> is uh, finding these portals of time. In order to get the ability to, to do some of those deeds, I had to learn other skills as well. And uh, <clears throat> uh, my grade 8 teacher, when he asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up at Lloyd, uh, I, I said, I'm going to fly with the uh, Golden Hawks, who were the precursor to the Snowbirds. And he said, no, 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 with your math, you're not, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. So I thought, you know, I thought, you know what? I know I'm going to do it. Nobody, you know, nobody's going to challenge me. I know, I know I can do it. So, <clears throat> when I was 16 to 17, I got my pilot's license through Air Cadets, and um, I had some uh, harrowing, harrowing experiences flying. But I thought I was a pretty good pilot. But I enrolled for uh, high-speed flight school at RCAF, and my math killed me. So, <clears throat> my Grade eight teacher was right in that sense, but uh, then I began. I decided to become an artist, and uh, ended up going to uh, Ontario College of Art, and I wanted to become an animator. And then I produced an animated film in my final year, which I sold to CBC, and I, I was on top of the world. But nobody was hiring animators at the time, so I ended up getting a job where I got to be a photographer and animate slides and produce soundtracks and produced animated slideshows with soundtracks and uh, it was a, actually a perfect job <clears throat> so I made some innovations in in the job being, being a being an artist I started to win awards all over the place and uh, the job was for Ontario, Ontario Parks and it was a government job, and it was, I, although it started as a two-month contract, 
every time I'd win an award, they'd think, oh, okay. I kept, they kept extending my job. <clears throat> so I'm going to making a birch bark canoe, 35, 39 foot long Voyager canoe. I got to make films about Voyagers. Um, I made films about the the great, the giant white pine. These are all award-winning films. And then I got quite intrigued by Indian pictographs and petroglyphs. And at the time, the academics said that uh, whoever carved them or painted them have disappeared in the mists of time, and the stories are no longer told. But in my mind, I knew there's somebody out there who could tell me what they mean. And I set out on an odyssey to find out, find someone that could come to me that would read the paintings and read the petroglyphs to me. Uh, to do so, I had to learn a lot of skills. Uh, it was, a, as I mentioned, it was a 16-year odyssey, but I had to learn how to talk to animals, one of the skills. Here me is, I had, I did a film once called uh, Of Moose and Man, and this is my very first shooting day. And uh, I was very lucky because it took, in nine days of shooting throughout a year, I, I was that close to moose that I showed the entire life cycle of a moose, a moose in a year and how their bodies change. And I learned a lot of this with a, all of this from a very dear friend, um, an Ojibwe teacher from Trent University. His name is Fred Wheatley. He's an, he's an elder from Perry Island. So we made a lot of historical films over the years and uh, in every historical film about white history, I always went back and, and, and introduced Aboriginal history, thanks to, jo thanks to Fred, because he grew up with the tradition of the spoken, spoken history. And uh, he was also a professor of hist uh, prof I'm sorry, professor of Ojibwe at Trent University. And he, uh, in a way, modestly said he spoke the Oxford Ojibwe. Uh, and the Ojibwe language in intrigued me to learn even more about Ontario history. And uh, it's a very poetic, very uh, picturesque language. For example, um, the word for coffee is uh, Nivi, nivi shabo vechibodek gechibo shagamek, meaning a beverage which is brewed, which catches the nose, but has a t tart taste to the tip of the tongue. <clears throat> so, uh, when I asked Fred about the, uh, about the, when I asked him about the, the petroglyphs, he said that, uh, well, his grandfather used to take people by canoe there. And, uh, but he said, but when I became the age to, to ask him about them, he became blind, so he couldn't help me. So, but he said, Loy, I will help you. I will help you uh, find a way to uh, make a film, which I had to do, because <clears throat> they were going to cover the site because the acid rain was, was washing them away. So they built a building over it, and they wanted to build a theater to set people in the right mind before they came to this very sacred site. So it took, it took many years to make that film, and uh, a lot of the trials and tribulations uh, of making the film are covered in the book. And there, are, uh, there were many rewards, and there were consequences for making the film as well. But, as Henry Miller said, the true story of any play is when all the birds come home to roost. And uh, I have met all of my heroes. All of my childhood dreams and later dreams I got to accomplish. All of those stories <laughs> do, do come home to roost on the last page of the book. Chasing the Muse, Canada. Chasing the Muse Canada is available on, on Amazon, Kindle, um, Chapters Indigo, and Veranda Bookstore in downtown Bracebridge. <laughs>